So I've titled this tonight, yay. I'm so glad I opened it up as well. All right, I'm gonna largely ignore you guys as I usually do, and um, I'm just gonna jump in for the ladies who are here and we'll just see what comes through. Lord, we just thank you for this time. Oh, Lord, I just thank you that it's not up to us. Um, just one of the key verses I just kept coming to again and again throughout my day today for various reasons was I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And sometimes we just need that reminder more than others that if we're tired or we've got a lot going on or we feel like in this case, I feel like oh, I'm not really organized to teach a full Bible study online. It's not up to us. So Lord, I just thank you that we don't have to power ourselves. Oh my gosh, imagine. And I thank you that we have the ability and the choice that you've given us to just surrender to you. And that indeed, it's not even our ability that we surrender by. It's our choice. It's our decision. It's our using our free will to say, hey, I surrender. And even that surrendering itself, Lord, is equipped and empowered by you. And Lord, I just thank you in advance for this time together this evening, whether it's 10 minutes or 10 hours. I just thank you that you put your words in my mouth. I, Lord, I just thank you that your voice, your breath gets to come through in what I teach. And I just give this study, this time together, this conversation, whatever it might be, over to you fully. I say, have your way, Lord. Let it be entirely of you and anything that's not of you. Let it just fall to the ground right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you also on behalf of everyone here. I just thank you for fresh revelation, mm -hmm. fresh wisdom, fresh discernment, um, just a greater knowing, a greater knowing of what it is, a greater, yeah, a greater discernment of what you're saying, Lord. Your word says in James 1 5 that we can ask for greater wisdom whenever we want and that it's going to be generously given and never refuted. And so, Lord, I just ask for greater wisdom to discern your voice. Your scripture says that your sheep know your voice. I just say right now that we know your voice. We are your children. We know your voice. We know what you're saying. And Lord, I just thank you for that greater discernment and in that greater re revelation, greater wisdom um, in every area of our life. But, but specifically, Lord, tonight, I just pray that you that you do impart whatever needs imparting to each person here, just right into their spirit, into their mind as the case may be, that there's just a knowing and that it's received. And so Lord, I just thank you right now for clarity in you, for certainty in you, and that our hope is assured in you as well. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we can go. There we go. Less than 10 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so there's really one scripture that I'm going to speak about tonight and it's a scripture God gave me today only today so this is why I was like oh I'm not going to do the Bible study live because usually I've had that insight prior than the day and usually spent some good reflection time on it and you know gathered additional scriptures and whatnot um, but today it's just one verse that God actually gave me in my morning devotion time and it was just a, you know a personal uh, like part of my life it felt like it was really relevant to one part of my life in particular and I really pondered this statement all day. I shared it with somebody actually where it was relevant to them as well. And I just kind of kept coming back to it all day and thinking about how this verse really just speaks to, well, every part of our life. And so if you want to grab your Bible or you want to write the scripture down, the scripture is in Amos. It's chapter nine, which is the final chapter of Amos. And it's verse 15. And I'm reading as always from the New King James Version. I use the Women's Study Bible as my favorite Bible. So the verse is... In fact, I'll read a little bit before that just so let's have some context here. So it's talking about the fact that Israel will be restored. Um, and it's a, it's a prophetic word that Amos was being shown. Um, so he saw the, the destruction of Israel in the earlier chapters and verses. And in this section, it's talking about uh, the Lord is showing him the time where Israel is going to be restored. So reading from verse 13 of chapter 9 in Amos, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes him who sows seed, the mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all of the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. And then verse 15, which is our core verse tonight that really just struck me. Um, and that I'm going to speak to. Verse 15 says, I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Now, this verse, I was I was in a whole morning devotion study where I was mainly in Jeremiah this morning, actually. And then I was flipping through my Bible. This was one of those times where I flipped past the verse. You know, I was flipping through my Bible. I was going from wherever I was at, 
somewhere in the New Testament and I was going back to Jeremiah to look something up in particular that I was looking for and I just opened the page there and it just kind of caught my eye and I really felt like God was just pointing that verse out at me, you know. Um, and what I love about it, the, the main reason I wanted to speak to this and that I've been just meditating on it and pondering it and kind of chewing on it all day myself and I'm sure I'll continue to, is it really spoke to me about the fact that God does make up the lost years. He does redeem the lost years. And where's that from? Joel Joel 2, 25, I think. I will redeem the lost years. And then in Job, he talks about the fact that the latter years are going to be better than the former. And there's many other scriptures we could point to. There we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The scriptures that were not gathered are being gathered. Um, the core verse, Philip Hebrews, Amos chapter 9, verse 15. Amos 9, 15. Someone can write it in comments maybe for me. Um, so he does redeem the lost years and he gives double for your trouble. Where's that? Isaiah maybe? I don't know. I'm just guessing. But that's somewhere in the, in the Bible as well. And so all these kind of scriptures that speak to the fact that God not only has a plan for us and it's not only per Jeremiah 29, 11, a plan to prosper and not to harm us. And it's not only that he does already give us all spiritual blessings at the point of salvation and our provision um, safety, salvation, obviously, in the first place. These things are assured in him. But this thing of how he's going to, I just got this word, like recalibrate mm. us to where we should have been yeah. is what really spoke to me about this scripture this morning. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Thanks for the comment. And I was thinking about the relationship area of my life and some really cool things that are happening there. But I was thinking about <laughs> the eyebrows go up. <laughs> yes, she just dropped that in. <laughs> no, it's not something that I've spoken about to anyone personally close in my life. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. <laughs> um, anyhow, I was thinking about that area and I was thinking, you know what's so cool? Like there's there's parts of me when when God starts to move, maybe like we've all exper- we've all experienced this. Maybe you've experienced this. Many of you have experienced this. When God starts to move in areas of your life that have been, let's just say it as it is, messy, mm. maybe even horrendous, mm. maybe even horrific, maybe even the byproduct of the fact that the person who was building it was you and not God. And mm. so therefore there's a kind of human outcome to that. Let's just, you know, let's just paint it that way. When God then starts to move in an area where maybe you've been praying, seeking, if it's for another person or people in like kids, family, etc., you've been interceding, you know, and you, you're so used to, we become so used to that, well, this area of my life is a disaster party. And yes, I am trusting God that it's going to be um, renewed and, you know, that he has a plan in this area. And I'm learning to trust God is part of that, obviously. And that's the whole thing that we've each gone through and, we continue to go through in whatever ways that we do. You know, am I really willing to believe? Does he really have a plan for me in that area? Yes, I believe the Bible theoretically, but does it apply to me? All of that sort of stuff. And then there's the whole bit about, okay, you supposedly gave over the whole you're building the thing thing, but now apparently you're still trying to build the thing, but you're just putting a God label on it. <laughs> There's all of that. And then the learning of handing it over. And we were even talking about that just before we went live, like not doing it yourself to try and make things work. Wow. What a journey, right? So we, I think we just become so used to, and I know that for me, there's multiple areas of my life, not just the one I referenced, where I've become so used to, well, it still feels like it's largely in the disaster party season mm. and or it's the cleanup phase. And yes, God, you know, is the one who's like big time sorting things out there. It's certainly not me because I wouldn't even be able to start. But we've almost forgotten to connect with the, like, I'm going to use the word visceral. I don't think it's really the right word for this, but I'm going to go with it. We've almost forgotten to connect with the like, visceral, like, oh yeah, like I can feel it, taste it, breathe it, smell mm. it. It's pulsing inside of me because it's real reality of there being a new thing which will spring forth mm. you know and isaiah yeah. 43 18 says remember not the former and like uh, yeah consider not the former and remember not the old isaiah 43 18 right consider not the former and remember not the old we've spoken about that a few times in study and how a lot of times we forget that because we're like come on god do the new thing yes lord new thing let's go 
Well, we have to remember not the former and consider not the old. Let the old fall to the wayside. And the old doesn't just mean the physical circumstance of that era of our life. The old is, I think, one of the biggest parts of the old is our own patterns, right? Our own mindsets, yeah. our beliefs. And I just saw this, I just got this visual right then um, where I saw, for some reason, corrug- like corrugation or corrugated corrugated steel or iron? I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Yeah, but you know where there's like rivets? Mm. And there's like, yeah, just like it's fixed. It feels or seems like it's rigid. And there's a way that the thoughts automatically go because there's already a pathway or a channel there. Mm. Or there's a way that, yeah, the thoughts go, the mindsets but also the beliefs. So there's constructs there in our beliefs, in our mindsets, in our thoughts, and in our emotional responses as well. And then, of course, in our behaviours, you know? And so these, to me, and I feel like God is just showing me this right now because I've actually never thought about that scripture in that light and I wasn't thinking about that scripture at all two minutes ago. So these, to me, are the things that we really get to hand over to God and say, God, I don't want to remember or consider those past mindsets anymore, those thoughts, those automatic emotional responses. It's not just like, oh, yeah, like get me away from, you know, the past season of whatever thing that, you know, life was not the right thing. It's not as simple as that because what is that? That's a manifestation, isn't it? That's an outcome. That's a manifestation of what was going on in the spirit realm. And what was being fed through our thoughts, our emotions and our own will. And then it physically ended up looking like whatever it did. So if we're going, oh, okay, I'm not going to focus on the past or not going to remember the former and God's going to do a new thing. I think one of the big things we really need to come before him about is, Lord, break me right now. I feel like we can pray this even even now, actually. Lord, just break me right now of mindsets that are not of you. And if you're in in agreement with this, you can just, you know, you can pray along and say, yes, amen. Break me right now of mindsets that are not of you, Lord. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, just reveal to me where I am in mindsets, beliefs, thought patterns, and also emotional reactions or responses that did not come of you. Lord, we're asking you right now by your Holy Spirit that you bring these things to the surface, that there is revelation and insight even this evening, even right now, where each person here is just going to see, know, and understand what you would have them see, know, or understand, where all of a sudden it's going to be so crystal clear that that way of thinking, that way of seeing that thing, that emotional response, that that is not of you. And so, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I just say, and this is personal, you've got to agree or not agree, or you say your own wording, I just say we come out of agreement right now with any mindset, any construct in our thoughts, emotions, or will, leading, of course, to behavior which is not of you. And Lord, we just break those agreements, we tear down the altars, we tear down the covenants, and we renounce a way of thinking, Lord, that is not of you. We actively choose to turn from it. We say, no more, that's not what I want, that's not what I choose. And instead, Lord, we just ask you to fill us afresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we repent as well. We just repent for having ways of thinking that were not of you. We repent for being in a continued fixed mindset that was of our own devices, even as we try to seek you. And Lord, we just thank you that you show us these things, that you reveal them to us, that you bring them to the surface, and that there's just a continued filtering that is going on there. Where we're able to see so clearly what you would have us see. Lord, help us, equip us and strengthen us to let go. And even right now, I just feel like you can just physically like lift your hands like you're taking your hands off the wheel like lord i just take my hands off the wheel of whatever it is that he's showing you i surrender i say it's no longer my concern i give it to you i hand it over to you do as you will in jesus name in jesus name so in order for that new thing and and we were talking about isaiah 43 verse 18 which is yeah remember not the former and consider not the old um The following scripture, which we love, of course, see God is doing a new thing. Watch, I'm paraphrasing, but don't you see God is doing a new thing? Um, Watch, don't you perceive it? Even now it springs forth. Watch, don't you perceive it? You're not going to see it if you're not observing. I think this is so important. We don't see what God is showing us if we're not observing. And, oh gosh, I've been so crazy tired lately and just such a roller coaster of energy and health stuff going on which is like weirding me out and and then you know I went through some medical stuff last year so it could be follow-on from that but God's really been showing me 
um, or I feel what he's been leading me to is that it's a spiritual thing and it's something I really need to stand strong in authority over and really just kind of like get your hands off my mind state and like fogginess and lack of clarity and that sort of Mm -hmm. stuff. Get your hands off my energy. Like no, last night I could feel myself start tossing and turning again. And I was, I felt like I'm not going to sleep again. I'm going to be up all night again, which happened already on Saturday night. And I just felt like, oh man, this, you know, and then today's going to go down the gurgler sort of thing, or it'll be hard going. And I just all of a sudden thought, no, no, I'm not accepting this. I refuse. I'm not available in Jesus name. I mean, the Bible tells me that he gives his beloved sweet rest. So I'm going to have that. Thank you. But I started to come against the forces of the enemy over, well, my own mind, my own health and well-being. And the reason I reference that is there had to be a perception there for me to see that God has a new thing to do in my mind, in my focus. I think I'm pretty high focus and output in general and probably nobody would dispute that but I know when I feel a bit off and most of my high performing friends and clients know exactly what I'm talking about right everyone else is like oh my gosh you never stop and you're meanwhile going okay well I know when I'm off Mm. and God's really been showing me that there's this heightened clarity focus and level of output as I rest in him that gets to come through me Mm. equipped and empowered by him and that that is part of what a redeemed mind of Christ is about, you know, because we go, okay, mind of Christ and our mind will be redeemed. And that's an ongoing thing that doesn't stop throughout our whole lives. And I think, I don't know if this is just me, but I, I've certainly had the thought at times that, okay, I kind of wrap all of that up in my mind as to do with being Christ-like and like holy and righteous, but I've not really drilled in until God started to show me that as far as things like mental acuity, focus, certainty, clarity, lack of overwhelm, lack of confusion, and just like being on, that that is part of a redeemed mind. Because is the mind of Christ functioning at like half mast or, you know, sleepless, et cetera, et cetera. But that's an example of something that I perceived only because, well, I started going looking essentially for Lord like you got to give me something here what i don't understand like this doesn't make sense i don't think this is physical there's no physical reason for this you're like sure medical stuff lasts you but oh, we're far enough past that and i know and you know you know you can tell as well when it's spiritual and it's not physical or when it's spiritually rooted at least and there might be a physical element and so we have to go looking we have to have those moments of pause we have to have that discernment which he gives us that we continue to ask for to go, hey, there's more to it than this. And I'm actually not going to accept this. So Lord, what is the new thing that you would want to do in this area? Because I'm going to refute that such and such previous or current issue or concern or struggle or hardship, which doesn't actually match scripture. I'm just going to refute that it's for me. I'm going to opt out, unsubscribe. I'm going to remember not the former and consider not the old. And instead, Lord, I'm going to ask you to plant in my spirit a vision to see and understand and know what it is that you have for me. And the thing is, in some areas of our, of our lives, even if we could maybe draw in examples from others of what a good or godly or, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, amazing high standard outcome could look like. It doesn't mean that we can necessarily connect into what that could look like in our own lives. I know that tons of my friends and clients, for example, who've been single mums for years and not in a godly relationship would agree with me or could resonate with what I'm about to say, which is that if you've not been in a godly relationship for years, either because you were in one that's not godly or right, or because you've been single for years or essentially single for years, then you might have some examples in your life of amazing godly relationships. Just like if you financially are not remotely where you would want to be right now, you might have examples all around you of people who make a lot of money and do it in a great way. You can't necessarily connect to that for yourself though, you know? And I just don't believe that we can without God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there's plenty of counterfeit versions of that out there of, you know, how to new age manifest basically. And that has its effect in whatever way that it has its effect before it ultimately just slippery slopes straight into death and destruction. So there's that, you know, it's just a little inconvenient. Um, If you're on that path, maybe just think about a different one. (laughs) So anyway, it's still kind of like this slightly hypey, like I'm going to keep saying I believe it, but 
where is the deep, deep grounding? Because the deep, deep grounding which, which occurs in your spirit of the thing which God himself has planted in you, so the vision for what is true for you, as opposed to trying to affirm or manifest or mishmash a whole bunch of other people's stuff and your own ideas and dreams together, the vision, the idea that is true for you was planted by God and therefore can only be revealed by God. And so whilst others, obviously, where relevant or aligned, could feed or support or, you know, educate or, you know, mentor or assist in some way to help that come to the surface, in the end, that new thing that God wants to do in whichever area of your life or multiple areas, you know, where we desire to see things change in accordance with God's will, that vision can only be shown by him. So the perception, the observation, watch, don't you see, don't you perceive it, even now it's springing forth, that can really only occur when we are in the secret place with God, which might be a heartbeat throughout our day or it's a deep dive time in the morning or whenever it might be, or it's the ponderings and musings here and then it drops in further later or maybe it drops in while we're here, you know, but it really can only occur in that time with God when we're hearing directly from the spirit of God into our own spirit and there's a revelation that surpasses the natural and it transcends the mind and it transcends the emotions and all of a sudden these you know corrugated iron like rigid sort of ways that I saw before well they're just obsolete like they're irrelevant it's like disregard it's not even you know available to be entered into evidence anymore because we've switched into a different well realm really into the spirit realm but we've switched into a completely different lens or perspective to see it through God's eyes and here's where this connects back to where we started this would be such a mess if I was trying to do this by myself without God because I started with one verse <laughs> and said we're going to talk for 10 minutes and have one verse and this is a quick little conversation. <laughs> God has added all of that. Yeah. But here's where it connects back to Amos chapter 9, verse 15, where we began. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I've given them, says the Lord your God. I really just believe that God has a vision for you for each person here to do a new thing in whichever area of your life you're feeling, you know, he's putting on your heart right now and no doubt in multiple or all of the areas of your life. But I really believe that there's a vision that he's asking you to stop and perceive, to stop and perceive, to be willing to observe, perceive and come to know, discern and understand something completely different, something that you don't even have a point of reference for. And you might have examples in your friendship circles or your mentoring circles or online or wherever it might be. And that's cool. And that's awesome. But one, oh, okay. This is what I'm hearing right now. So one of the reasons that you're not seeing what's there for you, what he wants to show you is because you've been looking through a lens of what it could be based on other people, even maybe the most amazing people who are truly living with God at the center of their life and they they really are great examples, you know? But you've been looking through a lens of this is what it could be, this is what I hope it will be, this is what I maybe wish it will be, this is what I'm dreaming or even asking for. And so you've been trying to relate to or resonate with an idea of the new thing that it could be in your life, but it's an idea of a vision that is constructed by looking through a lens of what others have in their lives. And again, they could be, it could be the best, most amazing people. Will this be recorded? Yes, because it then I then post it when I finish and it will go on, the, on my Insta as a video. So none of the comments that are here will be there. Um, I don't know what your name is, but it says, even if we observe it, we still won't be able to see it because what God has for us is far beyond what we observe yes well we have to ask him to show us through kingdom eyes this is just one of my prayers all the time Lord let me have kingdom eyes in this area give me your perspective on it it's a sensing and a knowing and a, and a seeing without eyes as we see without eyes um, and a sensing in our spirit but yes there's always more of causing God infinitely beyond what we could sense or even remotely begin to compute in any facet of who we are so let me drop back in on that though, because that was big. So there's this, there's this look, there's, there's this vision that we've collected through data, essentially, which comes from others. 
And what I just sense God saying to each person here today is I want you to stop. I want you to stop and slow down and see the vision that I've planted in your spirit because it's already there. It's already there. It's not out there. You don't need to go and get it, look for it, or find an example online or anywhere. It's already within you. And when you look within where I am, you're going to perceive it. You're going to see it. You're going to start to understand it. And it is going to be like nothing you have any reference point to. And I think this is huge because as humans in the natural, when we're walking by the natural and not by the spirit, we're always looking for a reference point. We're looking for data. We want to compute it. We want to compute it. In some cases, if we're more emotional, we want to compute it through our emotions. If we're more intellectual, we want to compute it through our intellect. intellect. If we consider ourselves more spiritual, but we're looking through the natural, then we're going to try and compute it through like an intellectual understanding of theology, perhaps. But really where it is, what God has for us is in our spirit and it's in a place that can't be um, compared with or computed with or that there's no point of reference for in anyone else's lives because it's a completely new thing and i just got this word earlier like 10 minutes ago whenever it was when we were talking um calibration like recalibration like he wants to recalibrate us to where it was that we were originally meant to be so when i saw this verse this morning and it really did just jump out at me because i wasn't going to read amos and i fell into it and i really just felt like god was like pull up right there just sit down I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I've given them. Mm. And I was thinking about that era in my life and I was thinking about like my mind cannot compute what is happening right there because that is some crazy stuff beyond any of my own imaginations or ideas or what I even thought was possible, etc. And that's how it is when God starts moving in any era of our lives. It's always like, well, I never could have thought of that. (laughs) But it's like, that's the point. (laughs) Why were you trying to think of it like what you were saying earlier, right? And we're always, we're so cute though, aren't we? Because we're always like, I never could have come up with that. And so this is a brand new concept that hasn't been written for thousands of years. (laughs) And we're like so amazed. (laughs) While at the same time being like, well, of course, like it is God. But still it's like, but I, I didn't see it that way. Okay, but stop looking. We have to stop looking at the way we would see it. So I'm rambling again. I'm on 29 tangents right now. But let me come back again. So what I felt he was saying is, I'm showing you the way it was always meant to be. This is actually kind of the key point that I'm wrapping into from where I began and which I thought would be like a 10 minute little one, two step, right? (laughs) We're not up to one hour yet. (laughs) Um, I'm recalibrating you to the standard that I always had for you is what I felt him saying to me because I just saw this verse and I was like I'll plant them in the land and no longer shall they be pulled up so they were pulled up they were not where they were meant to be they were you know like derailed derooted and he does redeem the lost years and the latter days will be better than the former and we will get double for our trouble and anything the enemy is caught taking from us it has to be returned sevenfold and the scriptures on all of that if you want to go look them up yourselves you know so it's not surprising but i think one of the things that we often don't compute or think about is the fact that he had a plan all along he had a standard for us all along our identity is written in him already it's not like once we become Christian or once we fully come to Christ, then we're a brand new, fresh off the press human. And he's like, oh, gee, shoot, it's nearly dinner time. I've got to make a plan for this person that I wasn't expecting to pop in. <laughs> you know, like some of you, when you get a new client, and you don't have your schedule worked yeah. out properly. Now all of a sudden you realize you don't have time to deliver enough for everybody. And you've got a new client now on top of it. It's not like that. God had the plan already. Right? It was funny. <laughs> it just came to me. Um, oh, thank you, God. I love, I love the analogies that he gives me. You know, so he's got the plan already. But also, another thing that we do know, but I think we forget, I know I forget, is that if you come along at, I don't know, age 44, whatever, like layer 44, let's call it, mm. it's not like you now missed everything that was actually meant to happen. Mm. Now, I mean, this is like a bit of a philosophical, theological rabbit hole if we go there. But 
Romans 8, 28 says, um, God turns all things to good for those who are righteous. Yeah. Joel 2, 25, I think I have that verse right, says um, he will redeem the lost years, etc. All the scriptures I mentioned previously. And so there's a recalibration and he returns us to where we were meant to be. We may have been pulled up for four years or 44 years or 400 years, probably not, but, you know, whatever, however long it was. But he will replant us. He will plant us not arbitrarily either. The scripture says, I will plant them in their land. It's not like, oh, sorry, your land's now been given away. Your destiny's been given away. Another client came along. We were doing a sale and someone else snapped it up. <laughs> right, sorry, sold your pathway to someone else. That dude over there's got it now. Um, I will plant them in their land, in their land, where they were always meant to be. And they no longer shall be pulled up from the land I have given them. Now, who believes that if God replants us in our land, that he can cause those roots to grow supernaturally, instantaneously, to where there is groundedness, depth, strength, and that all that was meant to flourish and come through and, you know, in every way that we were meant to bear fruit gets to come to pass as we continue to stay planted in him. I think so. So the vision he showed me is, yeah, you don't have a reference point for what's happening, Kat, in this area of your life, just like you haven't had a reference point when your whole business fell apart and blew up and, you know, imploded last year and at the very same time, basically, almost, with a little lag time, a whole new thing grew forth because I willingly surrendered the old thing and stopped considering it, which, you know, was a journey. And then a whole new thing came forth in, like, a ridiculously short period, everything that he's had me create since then, you didn't have a reference point for that. I never could have conceived of it. Even in the early days when I knew I was turning fully to God and I started to think about how this will impact my business, all of the thoughts or ideas I had about that are quite hilarious now. <laughs> in retrospect, it was not, none of them were accurate, like not even a tiny bit, you know? And I've seen that happen in various things in my um, children's lives and, you know, in other areas. And now I'm seeing it happen in a new area as well. And he's just saying, yeah, you don't have a reference point because there is no reference point. There's not only no reference point in your own past or your own, um, you know, previous choices, but also you can't look around and find a reference point. You can find great inspiration or examples of him working in others' lives, but you don't have a reference point for the new thing that he's going to do in you. And it is going to be a thing where there's recalibration and you're being calibrated back to what you were always meant to be. And it's a claiming of identity that can only be done in Christ, through Christ, by his spirit working in you and led by the Father. And it's so exciting because it does mean that it's not, okay, now I've got to make up for lost time, but it's also not, well, you know, I could have, should have, would have, and now I'm at this stage of my life or this area is like, you know, that. And so therefore, okay, well, now I only get like, you know, this percentage worth of what God had for me sort of a thing. That's not how God works. We know that. And it's, it is beyond our own comprehension because he is supernaturally completing things even now for each of us. And so in the same way that it is quite difficult to wrap our minds around how it was that we were crucified at the cross 2,000 years ago if we only gave our lives fully to God whenever we did and how does that work? But it just makes sense on a spirit level without trying to you know, fully articulate it. It's the same sort of thing. So he's already reconstructed. The calibration is already supernaturally done. And the new thing that he's doing is going to be a product of the fact that he has planted you in the land that was already yours. You didn't miss out. You didn't lose anything. You didn't waste, you know, whatever happened that was true outside of God, you know, in terms of time being wasted or destruction or whatever is just restored in the blink of an eye. And what does all of this hinge on? Um, it hinges on our belief and that we're willing to believe because, you know, it's our faith that assigns things to us. Yeah. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it does hinge on our beliefs. So we're going to pray. We're going to bring this time. Lord, I just pray. Um, I just pray for an impartation of belief. Lord, faith is one of the supernatural gifts mm in um where is that first corinthians 13 is that where it is we'll check later 
Faith is one of the gifts that is available to you. And Lord, we know that when we press in, we receive more of what you have for us. Now, I'm going to say something right now. There's a lot of people online who message me and say, Kate, you're really anointed in prayer. Now, I may be anointed by God in prayer. If that's true, anything that I have an anointing over my life on, I tell you, I chase after that. I pressed in for that. I just want to say that right now, right? Because I like I appreciate the you know the comments and so on, but it's not very long ago that I would have been like scared to pray in my own living room out loud, let alone anywhere else. So anything where you're like, wow, I want to have a supernatural faith or I want to be a prayer warrior. We're teaching about this in prayer warfare at the moment, etc. Um, you've got to press in and you've got to chase after that. And I, I really pursued that and chased after that. So we want to chase after the gifts that God has us, that he gives by his spirit. And one of those gifts is the gift of faith. So Lord, we know that when we press in, there's a greater faith in you that's actually available. In fact, there is a supernatural gift of faith beyond the faith that any believer would or should have in you. And so, Lord, I just pray for an impartation of the supernatural gift of faith, that there would just be an outpouring here, an impartation, and that there's a receptiveness. Lord, I just come against hardened hearts, fixed mindset. It's always where, you know, people's minds or any of our minds are automatically going in to try to figure it out. And Lord, I just pray for a softening right now for each and every person here. And if you agree, you can just say amen. I pray for a softening for each and every person here. And I just pray for a receiving of faith. And Lord, I just say that we we just love you so much. Um, We love you. We thank you. We declare that your word is true and that it will have its way and that what you promised you will perform. It will come to pass and that this is true individually as well as um, collectively. And Lord, we just thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And yeah, the final thing I'm going to say there is, what if you just decided to believe that God is who he says he is? I mean, I just say this to myself or anyone who's listening again and again, but what if we really just decided to believe that God is who he says he is, that there's, you know, a planning that's going to occur, that it really, you know, a lot of the time in God does come out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere, out of everything that came supernaturally before that. And obviously part of that is that, in the days where it hasn't shown up yet and we haven't seen it yet, that we're still believing that God is who he says he is, that he is a God of miracles, he is a God of wonders, he is a God of signs, he is a God who has a plan and a pathway for you and it hasn't been sold off in a flash sale to somebody else because you didn't pick it up as of yet. It's still waiting there. Um, I have to share this miracle before I get off this live and I know you saw that today. Did you see that post in the Secret Garden? No. I put it, I put it, oh, you were busy all day. What are the secret guard? Okay, this is crazy, right? But I want to share this um, to you guys and to hear. So God is so amazing how he'll sometimes just walk in, work in the most random way and you, you didn't even ask for that or say, it's just super, to me, this is crazy. So I've had this growth on my index finger for years, like, I don't know how many years, maybe seven or eight. And it looked like two little warts. I really hated it. It actually was from some glass that got into my finger years ago and I just assumed it would come out and it never did and then the skin that's my general philosophy if something gets under my skin (laughs) Um, and it it developed like a little hardened skin growth in two little bubbles and it's been there for years and no one would really probably notice it but it was very visible actually if I would have showed it to you and sometimes the bumps would become more raised or like inflamed looking and I hated it so much and for years I've thought I'm going to go and get this chopped off and I just never got around to it because it's not like it's urgent or whatever and I would forget about it sometimes and two weeks ago before I went to Bali I wrote in my diary in my calendar my google cal I wrote go to doctor about thing on finger because I (laughs) I decided two weeks ago I'm going to get this addressed yeah well last week Right after I got home from Bali, I noticed that it was really like black there as though dirt had kind of got, and because the skin was like rough and, you know, poorly, like not formed properly where it had grown over, I thought like some dirt sort of got in under the surface somehow and I was trying to clean it and it just looked really gross to be honest. And then gradually throughout the week, it started to shrivel off. Today, I looked down, look, you can see where it was. It's wow. completely flat. Wow. It's like I had it surgically removed. I don't know if you can see this on the video. You can't, I don't think you can see it. Have a before photo. 
No, I didn't take a before photo of the unattractive two little bumps on my finger that looks like warts. <laughs> But today is the same day in my Google Call where the notification came up saying call doctor about thing on finger and today is where it's completely removed and I just think that's it's so like crazy. It's, it, the, way it, the way it's healed yeah. is exactly how something heals if you have it burned off, yeah. right? Isn't that crazy? I just think that's such a crazy miracle, just a spontaneous expression by God of his grace well, his grace that saved me a doctor's trip and having to bother with it. But more importantly, a spontaneous expression of the fact that he is God. He does do miracles. Mm. That one, I would never have even prayed for that. I would have prayed for all sorts of things before I would have prayed <laughs> yes. for supernatural yes. surgery on that. <laughs> and it's just so cool. And I mean, I've had, I've had the out of nowhere miracles happen with much bigger things than that. But to me, that's huge because it's that demonstration like, hey, I'm just going to give you that physical reminder that I'm real and that I can do anything. And if I can supernaturally just fix this thing that was bothering you, that would have been a very minor and inexpensive surgery, but save me the trouble, then I can do anything. So I wanted to leave you that. I'm going to go drop me a comment on the replay because the comments that you left here will be gone. Thank you for watching. And if you do have any questions, please do message me. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour Savior, and you want to make a decision to do that and you want to personally have somebody pray with you, you can message me about that. But actually, we shall pray that prayer right now. So for anyone where you've been thinking, I want a close relationship with God, I want to come back to God fully, or I want to make that decision to have God at the center of my life, talking about God, um, referring to God in exchange with, I don't know, the universe or anything else, or just kind of talking about God and saying, I believe in God or I love God does not mean that you have salvation. The only way to have eternal salvation and also to have the spirit of God in you and walk in the authority, which is tremendous that we've been given as believers here on earth. The only way to do that is to accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your Lord and Saviour. So I'm going to pray real quick, but if you would like to talk more about that, you can message me. You can, however, pray this prayer right now alongside of me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift of salvation through the death of your Son, Jesus. Lord, I want to enter into relationship with you I believe that Jesus came to this earth as a man, that he is the Son of God, that he died and that he rose again and that he did so for my salvation. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I can't do this life alone. I don't want to do it alone. And Lord Jesus, right now today, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Saviour and to teach me your ways. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, I do have an audio that explains more about salvation, which I made. I can send you the audio to listen to if you'd like. That is obviously free, just to be clear. Um, so please feel free to message me. Goodbye.